In the last video, we learned about the distinct real root case of the second order differential equations. And now we will learn about the second case, which is the repeated real root case. It is quite similar to that and perhaps easier as well. So le let's delve deeper into it. Characteristic equation of a second order differential equation is based on these two roots. And we can solve these uh, roots by using the quadratic formula that we have done before. This is the first root. This is the second root. And the nature of these roots depend upon the discriminant part, as we already have experienced in the distinct real root case. Now we can try to find out the value of these roots after ascertaining that we are dealing with the repeated real root case uh, by numerically investigating it. So uh, in case of the repeated real root case, the value of discriminant will be equal to 0. And uh, when we put this value here, it will reduce to nothing and we will get the roots equal to this. Both of the answers will be equal to this because adding or subtracting pl uh, square root of 0, that is 0, will make no difference. So collectively we can say that they are equal and we can represent them with R. So we will get two roots, however, they will be repeated or equal. And this will be the uh, complementary function standard form in which you can see there is a3 and there is a4, two of the arbitrary constants, and then the exponential function that is r1 and then r2, this expression, uh, exponential part. And then we can also see that t is being multiplied here. It means that uh, this is a new term which was not there in the distinct real root case. So we have to be careful with this. We shouldn't forget this term. And now we can do this numerically. And for numerical solution, we have chosen this numerical example. And the initial condition for the actual, fun uh, actual function of the time path, that is yt, and the derivative of the um, time path or actual f uh, function is also given, where t is equal to 0. So these two initial conditions will be used once we try to definitize the general solution. So we can extract the values of a1 and a2 by comparing it with the standard form the way we did before in distinct real root case. And then the main thing is to find the nature of the roots. And that can be done by checking the value of the discriminant. And in this case, it should be equal to 0. Let us see if it is equal to 0. So when we substituted the values, we found that the answer is actually equal to 0. and this uh, signifies that we are dealing with the repeated real root case. Now the calculations of the roots can be done. And R1 and R2 are the roots. By putting these values, we can get the answers. That is, when we put these values here, it will be equal to 0, as you can see. And then the value of R1 and R2 will be the same, because this term means nothing, and this will be repeated. So minus 3 and minus 3 are the roots that are being repeated or collectively we can call them as one root. Now it is suitable to put the values of the roots in the standard form of the complementary function which is this. So after substituting the values we get the complementary function and then we add the particular integral as well to get the general solution. So this is the general solution which has yp as well as yc. However it is general solution because of two arbitrary constants, that is a3 and a4. So we want to definitize these to make it a definite solution for which the uh, time the initial condition has to be substituted. And this will give us the, um, the form that is visible here, this form. And here, the values will be substituted because y0 is equal to 5. And this will be equal to 1. This term will also be equal to 1. However, this 0 will reduce it to 0 because this is the value of this additional t which is here. So this additional t is reducing all of this term to 0. So now we have a3 and its value is likely to be uncovered here. The value of a3 will be 2. So we have found the value of one of the arbitrary constants. 
but the other arbitrary constant a4 is still unknown for that we have to use the other initial condition which is the derivative and that derivative can be found by differentiating this time path uh, in the general form and uh, in these steps it is done so you can uh, pause the video and see that how we can calculate the uh, time path uh, the uh, first order derivative of the time path in this case and this will allow us to the uh, to find out the um, y not uh, by bar t and then we can make it y bar not just to give you a hint when you will put these values uh, after you know starting the differentiation process this a3 is already found we have just found the value of a3 and that is 2 so we will use this value here and in addition to that we, we will get the simplified form here as uh, as it and then the initial condition can be substituted and when we do th so in this uh, first order derivative we get this expression and finally we get the value of a4 so a4 is the value of uh, a4 has a value of 1 so a3 is substituted and a4 is also substituted and we get the definite solution of the second order differential equation which was this equation which was given to us and we have found the um, definite solution of it which is equal to this so in this way we can use the um, formula of the characteristic roots um, for the second order differential equation that has equal real roots and um, in this way we can find out the complementary function of it numerically as well in the next video we will learn about the com uh, complex root case which will be the final case of the second order differential equation complementary function thank you